Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today we've got A520 motherboards, IBM changes the game, Intel's upcoming discrete gaming GPUs going 6 nanometers, and the first public RTX 3080 benchmark. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, numerous leaks on AMD's upcoming A520 boards have been found, along with information on the release date. So let's get to it. Starting things off, Igor's lab reports that motherboard vendors are set to release their budget boards based on the A520 chipset on August 18th, so basically tomorrow. And that's great news for anyone hoping to pick up AMD's upcoming 4th gen desktop Ryzen on a budget. But I do have some bad news. Igor's lab claims that apart from lacking PCI Express 4.0, AMD has once again left out any way to overclock. Of course, that's more or less always been the case with these boards. Either way, to further validate that 18th release date, Momomo underscore US found an Asus Prime A520M on Newegg for $75.99. It was actually available to buy at the time, but right as I was editing, it did become unavailable. If you're interested, I'll have an affiliate link to them for when they go live in the description below. Of course, with all the security breaches lately, it's never been more important to protect your data. And there isn't a better way than with today's sponsor. Dashlane, the online tool that keeps your personal information safe. First, by helping create strong passwords for all of your accounts, and then by securely storing them so you never forget a password again. Dashlane even autofills everything for you. Plus, they can secure your credit cards, addresses, and other personal information. Oh, and everything's encrypted, which means you know you're protected. So don't wait and make logging in on everything, everywhere way easier. You can get Dashlane for free on your first device by heading to dashlane.com slash gamermeld. And then when you want to upgrade to premium, use my code gamermeld for 25% off. Next up for today, IBM just announced their new Power 10 data center processors. And while obviously this isn't gaming related, it's a powerhouse of a CPU that I had to discuss. For one, it's their first 7 nanometer processor based on Samsung's 7 nanometer process. According to IBM, this brings a three times improvement in both capacity and energy efficiency. It also comes with support for both PCI Express 5.0 and DDR5, but that isn't even the biggest thing here. It actually comes with a new technology that IBM calls Memory Inception, which basically allows clusters of memory to be pulled together for upwards of petabytes, and any one processor can access all of that memory at once. It also offers up to 20 times faster performance in AI workloads when compared to Power9. At the end of the day, IBM is once again offering some incredible new features that certainly challenge the competition. Next up for today, we have some huge news on Intel's upcoming discrete GPUs. If you saw my last video, you know that Intel is officially working on enthusiast-level gaming GPUs with hardware ray tracing and everything, and they're set to release next year. Well, today we have an interesting report from IT Home. In it, they claim that Intel is actually going to use TSMC's 6 nanometer process for those high-end gaming cards. Yeah, we're talking one of their newest nodes. Keep in mind that they'll be competing with AMD's Navi and Ampere. For those who don't know, the 6 nanometer node uses their EUV process and it has an 18% increase in logic density over their 7 nanometer node. At the end of the day, if Intel plays their cards right, they could seriously challenge both AMD and Nvidia at the high end. And of course, competition is sorely needed at that price point, specifically to bring the price down. Lastly for today, we have a couple really big stories on NVIDIA's upcoming Ampere GPUs. Starting things off, three of the upcoming RTX 3000 series were recently spotted in the INF driver file, which means they should be coming quite soon. And from that, the user who handles Tech Power Up's GPU database confirmed that the device ID right here, 2206, is in fact the RTX 3080. And that leads us to a new benchmark found by RO Game, to which he also confirms that the 2206 ID is the RTX 3080. Anyway, when it comes to the benchmark, we can see it was done in UserBench, and it has that same 2206 device ID. So this is an RTX 3080. And as you can see, it comes with 10 gigabytes of VRAM running at 4750 MHz. And that means we're looking at an effective speed of 19 gigabits per second, which is right in line with what we saw in Micron's recently shared documents. When it comes to the clocks of the 3080 itself, we can see it's rated at 2.1 gigahertz. 
Now, that number actually represents the maximum this can be at, meaning the limit set on the BIOS by NVIDIA. So we can expect the 3080 to be more like 1.7 or so gigahertz stock. Basically, NVIDIA won't be getting better performance from higher clocks, which is actually really interesting because both Cat Corgi and Copite 7 Kimmy have been hearing news that NVIDIA will be doubling the amount of FP32 units in their stream processors. And that actually makes a lot of sense as it can certainly account for the near 40% performance increase that we've seen out of benchmark numbers. Of course, this user bench benchmark is the first public benchmark that we can see with our own eyes, but unfortunately, it didn't score all that well. No worries though, as it could either be the strange new configuration of their stream processors or simply an early sample. At the end of the day, Ampere is looking to be more and more exciting. So while that does it for today, let me know in the comments who you think will win between the RTX 3000 series and Big Navi. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!